just doesn't have any relationship to reality. Now, electric repulsion, if you keep the power down, therefore the mass of the system remains low, uh, even at realistic alphas of, say, 40, if you keep the power system small and go with hundreds of kilowatts, you can take advantage of the fuel saving available from high specific impulse and deliver cargoes to Mars with lower launch mass than is possible with chemical propulsion, but with a much longer trip time than is possible with chemical propulsion. So in the past and the present, many people quite credibly talk about electric propulsion as a potential cargo delivery system which at the cost of significantly more complex spacecraft and various technology development would allow you to reduce the launch mass of a Mars mission. So you could send cargo that way, but it would take years for it to get to Mars instead of six months, which is what we could do with chemical propulsion or nuclear thermal rockets. They, the, however, Vasimir is being advertised as the way to achieve quick trips to Mars. And Chang Diaz says, well, all I need is 200 megawatts, which is also 200,000 kilowatts. And at an alpha of 20, um, which is 20 tons per megawatt, that means 200 megawatts weighs 4,000 tons. Okay, the typical HAB module that you might use on a manned Mars mission weighs 40 tons. So you're talking about sending a payload to Mars with an engine that weighs a hundred times as much as the payload. Okay, we could deliver a 40-ton payload to Mars with chemical propulsion with a launch mass of about 120 tons. We could deliver it to Mars with an NTR with a launch mass of around 70 tons. Okay, but now we're talking 4,000 tons. And that's not only 4,000 tons you have to lift to orbit, it's 4,000 tons of highly expensive technology. It's not 4,000 tons of cheap propellant. Okay, so the launch mass becomes used, and furthermore, it doesn't get you to Mars in 40 days anyway, because I don't care whether you have 200 megawatts or 2 million megawatts, if the alpha is 20, the best you can do is, is get to Mars in, in six to eight months. Um, no faster than you could with chemical propulsion. So the numbers don't add up. And then finally, my objection to this that is even deeper is that this is being used by policymakers as the reason why we can't go to Mars today. Because we have to wait for this to come along. Okay, that is, we cannot go to Mars in six months because of the radiation. Untrue. The radiation dose in interplanetary space is only twice, rate, dose rate is only twice that on the space station. And many space station astronauts who have done more than one rotation on space station or Mir uh, have gotten radiation doses greater, cumulative radiation doses greater than they would going to Mars. In fact, if you want to know something, the space station program over the next 10 years, okay, the space station crew is six, seven, about the same size as a Mars mission crew. Okay, it's going to be spending 10 crew years in space, equivalent to five crew years spent in interplanetary space. If we were sending human crews to Mars every other opportunity right now with six month transit each way, okay, in other words, if the next decade we were sending missions to Mars, okay, every opportunity, five missions to Mars, we would be getting the same cumulative crew radiation dose as we're going to get on the space station program in the present decade without going anywhere. So this concern that we have to not go to Mars until we have an impossible propulsion system um, because we have to protect the crew from radiation is, is belied by the fact that we're actually going to subject our crews to that much radiation um, over the coming decade without going anywhere. So uh, that is my concern with this. Vasimir, as a technology that someone might want to spend money on to advance, fine. It could be an interesting addition to a toolkit. It, conceivably, for certain outer planet missions, it might be superior uh, than an ion engine. But um, it won't get us to Mars quickly, and especially in view of the fact that there is no program to attempt to develop 200,000 uh, kilowatt space nuclear power. The entire subject is irrelevant. Okay, 
So uh, I think what we, we need to do, we need to put Vasimir in, in perspective um, as a, you know, an interesting technology to be worked on in labs, but push on to Mars without it. Thank you. Thank you for your perspectives. We're going to now open it up to questions. I'd like to ask if you could please use the microphone in the middle, line up. We um, only have about 10 minutes for questions, unfortunately. You have an hour uh, break for lunch after that. So I'm going to limit the questions as well. So please, begin. I'd kind of like to reiterate what the panel was saying. I mean, I've designed a lot of uh, microwave circuitry and power circuitry. and. Just from a standpoint of the DC to DC converter, as Dr. Landis will reinforce, anything going into space has to have 80% efficiency right off the bat. So that blows away uh, your 90% efficiency on your DC to RF. And then you start getting into the world of the RF circuitry. And with traveling weighed tubes designed for radar, that yes, you can get 90%, but those aren't continuous duty type of a. Uh, electronics are pulsed, which I, if I understand the VASMIR correctly, it would have to be continuously operating at 90% and that would shorten the lifetime to almost nothing in a hurry. Okay. Yeah. Typical experimental numbers for electric propulsion systems end up at about 50% electrical efficiency. So out of the whatever kilowatts you're getting out of your reactor, only about half of that goes into propulsion. There's a lot of people who'd like to find better numbers, but that's what we're getting at the moment, about 50%. Okay. If we resurrected the old NERVA that was canceled in 1973 uh, or something similar, uh, could we get to Mars more rapidly than with the chemical solution? I say yes. We probably would be able to get to Mars more rapidly than the chemical solution. I didn't go through the full table, but the nuclear thermal design point I mentioned with the uh, thrust to weight a ratio of about six and two thirds, and that was a 40,000 pound thrust unit. And with that kind of, that class of nuclear thermal rocket, I think, you know, Bob Zubrin would agree we could maybe move a little faster. Even uh, if also, for this technology, there is some points that are put under the carpet uh, concerning performance. There is some kind of losses. First, because you cannot perform tests in the open air, you are obliged to limit the thrust of the engine you develop and you test. And so you, you, you augment the gravity loss, losses during the uh, propulsive maneuver to uh, propel your uh, spacecraft to Mars, so there is losses. Second, for safety reasons, you cannot start for a 200 kilometer altitude orbit. You have to start for a much higher, so your launcher from Earth has a loss of performance also. And third, the engine is most, much heavier than a chemical engine. The tanks are much uh, larger and even also. So we have a gain of performance, but not so much as the ISP could tell. Thank you. Next. Next. Uh, well, somebody must be a really good salesman that this has gotten any traction at all. So I, you know, I don't know how if this gets sold to uh, the leadership. But um, has anybody? figured out how long it would take, even if a series of unlikely miracles happened and you had this system, how long would it take you to get through the Van Allen belt where you'd get a significant dose of radiation if you spend too long there? Well, the, uh, it, once again, it all depends on alpha. Mm. Okay, with realistic alphas, it would take months. Now, some advocates of this technology will say, well, we will never bring it down. We'll have it stationed you know, up at Lagrange points and we'll go to it with taxis and, uh, you know, with chemical propulsion. And you can get into these sorts of complex architectures uh, to avoid things, but it just, things get more and more complex and you just move further and further away from the realm of spacecraft engineering that we actually know how to do into this sort of parallel universe of, 
you know, the, 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 uh, the, the magnificent activities in space. The, the stuff.